Yeah, as part of our new segments, we kind of trialed a segment uh, a few episodes ago where I read a list of weird deaths that had happened in 17th century London. And uh, we thought, well, that, that could be a good, like, content fodder is just reading shit from a list. So <laughs> we love a list. Yeah, I was yeah. kind of thinking as a, um, you know, as a title for it, maybe like Listery class, something like that. Okay. Be, you know something there but because it is the holidays i you know for this week we can go with mary listmas i was just thinking like santa's list or some well i mean that's good too though what, what, is it is there a naughty and nice theme to these facts or so what this is we'll get into what it is i just want to hit the the theme song because i've been dying to play this theme song right affrighted and wolf ague and wolf Palsy and wolf, pleurisy and wolf, consumption and wolf, convulsion and wolf, cancer and wolf. Put those together. Yeah. Hmm. Scurvy and wolf, <laughs> smallpox and wolf, strangury and wolf, swinepox and wolf, fistula and wolf, Frenchpox and wolf, cancer and wolf. Put those together. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that was, that was awesome. excellent. <laughs> that was, uh, that was... That was art. <laughs> Can you so, believe so, I don't get paid to do uh, graphic design? Graphic, well, whatever you call it, what you do? Motion graphics. That's the look, one. Look, no, that was that was great. <laughs> that was pretty good. Look, uh, look, having done a decent amount of like animation and motion graphics in the last few weeks, um, I don't want to do any more of it. It it sucks. It's it's very hard work, and but like, I don't know because it's just considered like a shit tier field. Like it just pays very poorly. Like, you know, I was asked to do an assignment and I was just like, fuck off. That's, that's way too much. That's not enough money to do that. And then I found out like, no, that is a normal amount of money. And I'm just like, oh no, no, I'm not doing that again. Get the fuck out of here. So no, that was good. That was worth, no, no, I'd pay more than $500 for that. Nice. All right. I'm holding you to that. (laughs) Australian dollars. I'm not sure how they scale to Canadian dollars. So I don't know. Probably better actually, aren't they? Oh, they're a little worse, but we don't make him feel bad about his little, little his little, his little money worm dollars. <laughs> just a, just a pathetic, puny dollars. little dollars, man. <laughs> Four hundred worm dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's only valid in worm businesses. <laughs> it's like getting a gift card. God damn it! <laughs> it is kind of like if somebody hands you Australian so, dollars, so it's like, well, you just gave me a gift card for Australia. This sucks. I never go there. <laughs> Yeah, that, that so, is, so that judging is true. by the intro song, a lot of people got got killed by wolves. Is that is that like a trend or? Uh, a lot of people who had cancer got killed by wolves. I think that was yeah, the yeah, takeaway. That was the thing. There was, the, the categories were extremely confusing because there was cancer and wolves. They had put those mm-hmm. in the same, and there was like a child bed was one of them. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't know if we should rehash that whole list, but it turns out a lot of them were way bleaker than we realized. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, so what was the deal with cancer and wolf? I don't. I couldn't figure that one out. <laughs> okay. I just know that child bed is dying in childbirth, and oh, like okay. the reason they had weird oh, ones, like God. yeah, and like there was ones oh, like chrysomes comedy. and teeth, which were different like uh, developmental stages of infant mortality. Oh, so it was like if you're an infant, it was like you were. I don't know. They call it a chrysome. That means you died before like this certain stage, and teeth meant you died as like a baby with teeth oh just yeah in teeth, the teething state oh. yeah because yeah. it just said teeth <laughs> way more about that list was about like infant and maternal mortality than we realized yeah. some of those are like mind-boggling statistics like how little and how much of like people had died looks what was the biggest one i think it was childbed but we couldn't figure it out at the time but i don't know no, people like will a- just have to go on youtube and look for no, what the, no, stats the reason were. why the reason why people you know make a big deal about like oh the life expectancy was 30 is because of all the the infant mortality rate like if you if you survived infancy you could easily live to be like 60 70 or something like that depending on like where you lived conditions and everything like that but like no like child people died in childbirth all the time or you know babies you know died all the time that's also why people had like more than three kids because it was like you knew some of them were going to like cock it along the way oh yeah so uh so yeah i i, I understand you guys wanting to leave that out <laughs> that's yeah. right child people died in childbirth so 
<laughs> what we've done this time is I've created my own presentation um, for, well, it was created for you and Josie, God rest her soul, but you'll, you'll have to, you'll have to really pick up the slack here in making some very exaggerated, shocked uh, reaction faces. And I'm sorry, uh, I'm trying to do yeah, you, you'll get some time to warm up. I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint here. So I'm trying go. to do my best Josie face. <laughs> <laughs> Top cunts who lost their seats to Santa Claus. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the, the, the concise backstory here is that uh, all this happened out of order due to postponements. But when I was doing research for my like uh, extended, you know, Christmas zone dimension mm -hmm. story, I was try I was doing a lot of like actual research on all these different like schisms and factions in Christianity and like the different way they do Christmas and like the history of all these things. And it ended up just becoming, I found some really wild shit in there. And so I tried to condense the best, most interesting parts I found in Wikipedia into this presentation here. So to understand, <laughs> to understand <laughs> Santa Claus, oh, great. <laughs> we got to learn about schisms. And uh, so this chart, you're all going to want to memorize it. There's a, band. there's a test at the end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, these motherfuckers love to have schisms. So we're going to, we're going to blow through some of this um, because I want to get to the good stuff. Let me make that bigger. All right. So this is the kind of language you can get excited about when you're reading about schisms on Wikipedia. You know, the difference between communion, college, communion ecclesiology, Eucharistic ecclesiology, Baptist. I can't even finish this paragraph. I want to die. <laughs> Great fodder if you want to come up with Warhammer character names, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is there's some great names in here. So this is just like one random one I grabbed, like the Oriental Orthodox Church, a church I never even heard of. And like, these are like thousand plus year old schisms uh, of people who are so mad that the other people are heretics. And it comes down to stuff like this. Um, so these this group of people refused to accept uh, this one council, which said Jesus is in two natures, one divine and one human. They would only accept of or from two natures, but not in two natures. So this is what's been driving world history. Yeah, this is a good thing to be pissed about. <laughs> yeah, um, bigger <laughs> ones. So like the the big schism. This is between why there's like the you know the Eastern Orthodox and the Roman Catholics. Um, they were trying to figure out stuff like what's the deal with the Pope and. You know, what can the like, what is like the jurisdiction of people from the church? And like, should there be yeast in the bread? Stuff that you absolutely would and should kill for. Is it because it. Okay, no, 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 I'll, I'll no you it don't out. even try. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, these motherfuckers. I think they. Um, I don't think it's going to do everything in order. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, this was all supposed to be revealed by degrees. Um, and that was a thousand years ago that the um, Eastern and West churches split. Uh, and I was going to say, when do you think that a Catholic Pope next visited an Eastern Orthodox country? 2016. Well, in 1999. Oh, fuck. That's 900 <laughs> years. 900 years before I was like, all right. Wow. You can, you can come over. Damn. Damn. Uh, so the, the next prompt was, did things get better in 2016? Uh, and those are some little snippets of uh, people in Georgia who were very upset that Francis was coming to convert them because he was an antichrist and a spiritual aggressor. So, yeah, we're all having a good time at church. <laughs> spiritual aggressor. I don't know. It sounds yeah. like they haven't been to a music festival. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what I'm gonna I'm gonna get you guys to bear with me for a second. I'm gonna switch from the built-in presenter, and I'm just gonna share my Google Drive screen because this one, it, I have like things that layer over each other, and it's gonna be fucked. Pickles this, children. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about those children in a second. Look, at, <laughs> and during this period of art, like trying to, I. Yeah, I think everything was still really abstract. They weren't really doing high fidelity art yet. So yeah, that's why they look like little hobbits or some shit. I love old pictures of like baby Jesus. He's always so jacked. The baby? The baby, always. Oh, wow. I do still have a kitty on me. 
Oh. Back us to where Saint we Nicholas. were. Yeah, St. Nicholas. Who is he? And these bunch of extremely jacked children. Look at that butt. Backpacks. Wow. Got abs on Yeah, abs on yeah. his back. Damn. These are the most cut children. But you know, people were just built different back then. Kids that age <laughs> had to be like carrying yeah. hay bales. Right. That's the reason why there's so much infant mortality. Is they're all so yoked, but they didn't have the wisdom to not use it all the time. So yeah just... everyone was trying to make superhumans and some of them failed but the ones who were like had weird back abs yeah <laughs> exactly yeah so saint nicholas a uh, real dude more or less um the stories during terrible famine Terry. oh my god terrible terrible famine <laughs> yeah sorry i was going into french mode half of this as legally mandated will be in french <laughs> One story tells how during a terrible famine, a malicious butcher lured three children into his house where he killed them, placing their remains in a barrel to cure, planning to sell them off as ham. Oh, I'd sell each of those kids as ham. Look at them. Yeah. Oh, those are hammed up kids. Those are sure. ham yeah. kids. Damn. Nicholas, visiting the region to care for the hungry, saw through the butchered lies and resurrected the pickled children <laughs> by making the sign of the cross. Some historian states that the story is without any historical value. And then when he put them back together, the abs were on the back. So, like, he did well, but, like, you know, B, B effort, I think. Yeah, he yeah. can't. Mm. Yeah. I'd pay, like, $200 oh, no. for it. But this thing happens all the time. I don't know why they say that's ahistorical. Like, people pickle children, children get resurrected, it's normal. Resurrected, resurrected pickled children is... A great metal band a name. A great metal band name, yeah. yes. <laughs> So St. Nicholas did, uh, according to, you know, the stories about him, did some actually very badass things like slapping the shit out of some heretics and grabbing swords out of dude's hands. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's a yeah. big boy, too. He's he's real metal. Jeez, look at him. Well, who's the guy on the left? <laughs> I <don't laughs> just know. noticed him. They're, they're it all, it, it was a, you know, it was a different time. Yeah. Was it a theater thing or it's what's a, going on there? a weird Eastern European Christmas character called like Jimmy the Twink. He's St. Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we will get into the weird Eastern European Christmas characters. It's, it's traditional for children to dress up as Jimmy the Twink uh, and do yeah. a parade down the street. In the I think it was, a, they have it was a pagan thing at one point, right? A pagan thing or a pagan <laughs> thing? No, a, pe a pegging <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, no. oh, somebody's awake. He has something to say. Oh, oh yes. boy, it's cat time. Oh, okay, oh, say man. some. Get the cat some camera time. I'm going to fuck with the light. All right. All right. <gasps> oh, look at him. Oh, little sweetie. He's so tiny. Oh. So his... Oh, cat. His name so far is either uh, Mr. Man or... Uh, was it Squeaky? Squeaky Pete. Yeah. Oh, they're both so good. Oh, God, I miss cats. Oh. <laughs> Are there no cats in Australia now? No, they killed them. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, the, the cane cats. toads ate the cats. Yes, yes, exactly. No, when when our last cat died, sorry to bring the mood down again, we were just like, should we get another cat? It's just like, no, man, we have kids now. Let's let's just wait. Let's wait. We'll wait until they're bigger. Yeah. So wait I, until they start I will just enjoy other people's cats. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, sorry, sorry, Kelly. <laughs> no, it's good. Um... Oh wow, cat was even full screen. See, this is this is why you pay Josh the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh yeah, just another little fun uh out of context snippet. A lot of this stuff is much better without context. So thankfully okay. we won't be diving into context. Goodness. After the second daughter was married, the father stayed awake for at least two quote nights and caught Saint Nicholas <laughs> in the same act of charity towards the third daughter. What? Hmm. So, so, I thought the saints didn't really fuck. Like you didn't really well, if it's an act them, of like... charity. That's kind of rude. Oh, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> please have sex with my ugly daughter, please. <laughs> <laughs> Shut her up, come on. <laughs> anyway, you're all horrible people for assuming that's about fucking. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. I, I assumed it was fucking, and Jimmy the Twink watched and jacked off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, here's a nice statue of St. Nicholas. Very big and solemn. Uh, it was, uh, so this was being put in the, in this town in Turkey that St. Nicholas was from. 
And uh, in 2005, the mayor had the statue replaced by a red suited plastic Santa Claus statue because he wanted <laughs> oh, 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 that's so much better <laughs> because he wanted an image more recognizable to foreign visitors protests from the russian government against this were successful and the bronze statue was returned to a corner near the church that's so it's this, yeah kind of cool looking bronze statue with this like the tackiest shit you can <laughs> this is something you'd see on someone's lawn yeah this is this is terrible i love it yeah, the sanctification of all of these figures is going to be a major theme here. Yeah, this is like, oh, Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas. Oh, I like him. Yeah. yeah, so. That beard. Now you, Lucas, you're you're a Bunta Vista head, so you you probably already know about Sinterklaas, right? I, oh. <laughs> you just realized what we're about to get into. Um, Maybe. I have missed a couple of episodes, but I do know a little bit about, like, I, I feel like I read about St. Nicholas fairly recently or something like that. I do enjoy like Christmas monsters or just like, you know, how Eastern European Christmas uh, got metal really quick. So I probably have absorbed some of this, but, uh, but this is great. So You're so maybe. wrong because it's Western Europe. This is Dutch. So Sinterklaas <laughs> is a Dutch character oh, I, yeah. who's pretty like directly comes from St. Nicholas. Um, mm. And I think he's become a little santified over time. Oh, it's okay. So Josh knows what's going to happen. I, I do. I, as soon as you said the Dutch, I, I, yeah. I also understand what happens now. So there is a... Uh, oh, that wasn't supposed to be separate. Anyway, so it's a little fun little Dutch kids Christmas song. You know, you usually sing in Sinterklaas, Little Capon, Throw something in my little shoe. Throw something in my little boot. Thank you, dear Sinterklaas. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody want to do the original Dutch? Dutch? Dutchly phrased thing. <laughs> so yeah, it's the World War II for sure. The, the World War II. little shoe from bombs up the crash. <laughs> Thank you, dear Santa Claus. There's actually a lot of that is like, in, like, I mean, we do it with stockings, but that was the thing. It was like, you'd put like money in like kids' shoes. Yeah. Look at this old um, but yeah, the World War II version was changed to, uh, RAF, little cap one, throw something into my little shoe, throw bombs at the Krauts, but scatter candy in Holland. <laughs> That's my favorite prayer. So this is the most oh, yeah. wholesome wow. part of the Sinterklaas section. Uh -oh. right. Now we're going to learn about Sinterklaas and Zwarte Piet. Here he is. <laughs> Do you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, you know who Zwarte Piet is. Um, I first heard about Zwarte Piet years ago. I was working on a film job with a guy who, you know, with a Dutch guy who lived in Australia. And it was at this point that, you know... Was he pro Zvartipede, or anti-blackface? Oh, very, very anti Zvati Pete. Like, there, is, there are a vocal, you know, lots of, like, Dutch people who, like, agree that Zvati Pete sucks and they should get rid of him. But I was just like, you d we were driving back from Toowoomba, which is sort of like a western inland city towards Brisbane, and he was telling me about Zvati Pete, and I was like, what? What the f- you do What? So, so yeah, and that was kind of when it also exploded, you know, in like a lot of, you know, Western countries. It's like, oh yeah, the Dutch like black, do blackface for Christmas. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, that's spo a spoiler. <laughs> so, <Sorry. laughs> so this is a real particular fun one. So this is, uh, I had little notes. This is a famous oh, no. uh, actress. She was American born. She was uh Trained up in France. This is like in like the 1920s, and there she's being introduced, I guess, to this like some Dutch congregation. And there is a nice little Zwarte Piet there. Uh, I guess I'll, okay, I'll explain who Zwarte Piet is. Yeah. So he's supposed to be Santa's helper. Oh no. And no. <laughs> uh, and he has like a very particular costume. And the the origins is up is that he's a Moor from Spain, which was like like uh, the Moors were like African Muslims, I think, who like, yeah. took over mm -hmm. Spain, much of Spain for a while. So he was like dressed like a Moor and had just like they wore blackface. That's straight up what it was. And then they kind of tried to like retcon it more recently. So it's like, oh no, he's just sooty from the chimney. That's yeah, that would have been my gonna be. hopeful guess. Yeah, well, and like the the more like toned down version of it that some people are trying to push is like you just have your normal skin tone, but you just put little streaks of black, so it looks like soot. Which is like, all right, I, I think that's a fair like reformation of it. Mm -hmm. But not everyone, certainly not everyone in the Netherlands agrees. Um, do the little anti glare thing that like <laughs> football players do. It's like, yeah, exactly. But yeah, how do, uh, I don't know, how impressed does she look? 
So again, that, oh, that's she's smiling. Yeah. That's synther class and one singular Zvarthy Pete. Originally, okay. synther class was accompanied with one or sometimes two Zvarthy Pieten. But just after the liberation of the Netherlands, Canadian soldiers organized a Sinter class party with many Zwarte Pieten, and ever since, this has been the custom, each Piet normally having his own dedicated task. So this next picture is our fault. Uh, okay. Now, if you can see <laughs> oh, yeah. this picture well, this is an entire boat of people in blackface. <laughs> wow. This looks semi-recent. Incredibly recent. <laughs> There's um, like violent pros worthy beat protests every time people try to like stop this from happening. Huh. Yeah. Well, because look, in Australia, we have a Dutch community that tries to do Zwartepeet. And, you know, it blends particularly well with like Australia's own like weird racism. Uh, but, no. Uh, but no, I don't think there's been a, a boat of Zwartepeets. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Certainly not enough to fill yeah. one boat. <laughs> Oh, All right. Sinterklaus. Sinterklaus. So let's steam forward. St. Nicholas, uh, he's actually had a bunch of companions in different traditions. Uh, these include Knecht Ruprecht, Hans Trapp, and Belsnickel, <laughs> and their good friend Krampus. Oh. Yay. Is this, uh, is this the, uh, the naughty verse? Like, uh... Do you guys, guys deal with the naughty kids or just all the kids? Uh, we'll get into it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> according, so first one, according to tradition, uh, Connect Ruprecht asks children whether they know their prayers. If they do, they receive apples, nuts, and gingerbread. If they do nice. not, he beats the children with his bag of ashes. Nice. Ashes? Yeah, bag of ashes. Oh, that's not so bad. Uh, in some of the traditions, children would be summoned to the door to perform tricks, such as a dance or singing a song to impress upon Santa and Ruprecht that they were indeed good children. Those who performed badly would be beaten soundly by servant Ruprecht, <laughs> and those who performed well were given a gift or some treats. Those who performed badly enough or had committed other misdeeds throughout the year were put into Ruprecht's sack and taken away, variously to Ruprecht's home in the Black Forest to be consumed later or to be tossed into a river. <laughs> So that's just, that's just starting mild. So, yeah. Oh, this is this is the mild. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so th this is uh this is the one of the few non Wikipedia parts. Uh, we got Krampus and Perched, uh, the shape shifting Christmas witch who fills disobedient children's bellies with straw. The terrifying <laughs> Hans Trop is possibly the worst of all, though. One story in particular describes an instance in which he stabbed a child, sliced him into tiny pieces, and cooked and ate his flesh. Oh, oh. that's like the story from Black Christmas. These had zero chill. It was. It's it's funny considering how sanitized Christmas is now, which is odd because I feel like I know children. I get the feeling my own children, even though they are very little, would fucking love these stories. Would love yeah, to oh yeah. There's like there's like a Christmas demon that kills you if you don't like pray or some shit. <laughs> yeah, because these stories are like surprisingly metal. You know, I'm like we should put the metal back in Christmas. You know, start, yeah. start beating people with bags of ashes. And oh, it gets better than that. Oh, so the other one, Bell's Nickel. Um, I just thought this was interesting. It's a sometimes the Xmas woman. So we know we <laughs> oh. get a one of very very few female characters in this entire uh, this entire orchestra of people. That's the correct word. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, he or she would be equipped with an ample sack about the shoulders filled with cake, nuts, and fruits, and a long hazel switch was supposed to have some kind of a charm in it as well as a sting. One would scatter goodies upon the floor, and then the scramble would begin by the delighted children, and the other hand would ply the switch upon the backs of the excited youngsters, who would not show a wince, but had it been parental discipline, there would have been screams to reach a long distance. So they're hitting the children as if they were mercilessly abusing them, but the kids love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, they like it because they're getting treats at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. It's very BDSM. Uh, a do, lot of these are just different they... versions of this. What? <laughs> oh, sorry, they... I was going to say is, is you know, the, one of the Dutch stereotypes is like, oh, Amsterdam has the red light district and there's a lot of BDSM stuff. Like, I wonder if this is feeding into it at all, but. Undoubtedly. <laughs> From a young age. <laughs> So we got another character. I think this is the one one of you mentioned, Pea Fuata, which is like Father Whipper. Oh. And uh, 
yeah, there's different versions of it. In this one, along with his wife, he kills these... Uh, oh, sorry. There's three boys who appear to be wealthy and on their way to enroll in boarding school. Along with his wife, he kills the children in order to rob them. One gruesome version tells that they drug the children, slit their throats, and cut them into pieces and stew them in a barrel. St. Oh. Nicholas discovers the crime and resurrects the children. After this, Père rep uh, repents and becomes St. Nicholas's partner. Yeah, so it's like in so it's like in Dragon Ball when when they beat uh like Piccolo, Piccolo just becomes like their friend now. And you know, when they so yeah, Saint I do not is acknowledge Goku, Dragon basically. Ball, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's like a buddy cop thing. It's like he used to murder children until he was saved. He, Saint he, he, Nick he, he, and the <laughs> Whipper Daddy. And Daddy Daddy Whippersnipper. Like I <laughs> I guess it just goes to show, you know, like yeah, everyone you know, can have everyone, a comeback everyone story. Everyone has a bad day. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was just in a real crappy mood. He's in a crappy mood. Yeah, <laughs> I think fair. it's kind of the actually the origin story <laughs> for all of them is like they're bad, and then they get like they they're they're like punishing the good children or sorry, punishing the bad children as part of like Man, their penance. I would watch this movie actually. I would watch this yeah. movie if Saint Nicholas was played by like uh uh I don't know like uh. Willem Dafoe or something like that and he like rips around and he like beats all of these uh these like Christmas like demons into submission and then he has like a super squad and he takes on like Krampus at the end or something like that look yeah. don't don't give them fucking ideas put down the lave they did they did <laughs> make a Krampus this. movie oh, oh did um, they yeah oh I was uh was it good I haven't seen it okay <laughs> There's one there's one piece of oh okay this is good as well. See the the art I saw of Father Whipper, he looked like a ring wraith. Like just totally covered <laughs> in black except for for a whip. He looked cool as shit. I was like, how have I not I know about Krampus? How have I not heard about this guy sooner? That's Oh, well and this, this is rad as well. This This is sort of the the statement of the whole thing is like look at what they took from you. Like, yeah, th like we could have all this so cool, cool shit and all we have is fucking American Santa Claus. But we'll get there. So yeah. Sorry, Kelly. I, Kelly, I know you're trying to get through this quickly, but uh, we just before recording this, we recorded our final episode of the year about Australian Christmas and uh, how there is this tension in Australian Christmas because like all the Christmas imagery is like wintry and pagan, and that's not really Australia at all. It's like summer here, but uh, we try to make it work, and maybe it would work better if we had like cool, scary-looking, you know you know fucking pagan monsters like this guy this looks rad yeah 100 percent. yeah the, like you know have like a christmas that like, represents the like local wildlife you know like everything can kill you and you know it they'll, everything... they'll fucking kill kids and... <laughs> everything looks like a monster from the witcher it's, yeah, yeah yeah it's rad yeah exactly yeah kids are too spoiled they don't have the fear of being like flayed open and boiled alive and that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's the why they're all. Christmas. That's why people are misbehaving. Their, you know? That's why they're all playing their Fortnites and. I got no, be honest, and I turned out fine. <laughs> we don't have to rush at all. We can just we can just do this for hours until you have to go, and then we'll just <laughs> we'll just forego the game. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, if we're I, having I'm... fun. All right. Yeah. Well, let's let's continue with this uh, with this little bit here. Um, so briefly, Pierre Fouettard uh, appeared in Fouettard. the United States oh, under the Fouettard. translated okay. name Father Flog or Spanky. Oh my! Oh, spanky. Although almost identical to the original French personification, Father Flog had nothing to do with Christmas. What? And also had a female accomplice named Mother Flog. Ooh, the two doled you. out specific punishments for specific childhood crimes, e.g. cutting the tongue out for lying. Wow. This is some real BDSM yeah. shit. Yeah, it's getting hot. <laughs> yeah! Oh, yeah. yeah! It's Krampus time, baby. Fuck yes. Some good Krampuses. So, just a few notes on Krampus. Krampus tradition is being revived in Bavaria as well, along with the local artistic tradition of hand-carved wooden masks. In 2019, there were reports of drunken or disorderly conduct by mass Krampuses in some Austrian towns. Yeah. That's, that's surely, that's, that's, that's that's surely the extent of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's fine, right? Yeah. Every year, there are arguments during Krampus runs. Occasionally, spectators take revenge for whippings and attacked Krampuses. In 2013, <laughs> after several campus runs in East Tyrol, a total of eight injured people, mostly with broken bones, were admitted to the Lienz District Hospital, and over 60 other patients were treated on an outpatient basis. These are Krampuses or Krampus victims? It just says people. Well, so not Krampus, because they're people. Krampi? Yeah, oh yeah, it would be Krampi, wouldn't it? 
I like that it says <laughs> like the, the spectators no, occasionally take revenge for the whipping, so it's implying that like the Krampuses are regularly going around whipping like without repercussions. Is that, that, the is that what's happening here? That's, but you just don't get it. There's a rich history. It's occasionally tradition. they fight back, but not usually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like my read on that was that they're just kind of whipping random people, and occasionally people are like, no, fuck you, and then, you know what? I, I You fuck around and find out, I think. Yeah. yeah. Fair. So, I mean, yeah, but when they when they stress the broken bones, so I was also reading about medieval torture today and like, you know, the breaking of the wheel thing like, where they like tie you to a wagon wheel and they like smash the stick between the spokes specifically to break all your bones. Yeah. I like to imagine they also brought that back in Austria <laughs> where like they the just Krampus tie the Krampuses just to the wheel and just break them. It's fine. You have modern medicine. You're fine. Yeah, we're great. <laughs> break, fixing bones. Come on. So this is just going back a tiny bit. This is back to the 30s. So the some, I guess, kind of like proto-fascist regime uh, prohibited the Krampus tradition. Uh, yeah, these were clerical fascists called the Fatherland's Front. In the 1950s, the government distributed pamphlets titled Krampus is an Evil Man. Yeah. That's, well, yeah. Isn't that the point? <laughs> right? That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, that's right. This is why I fascists are done. Krampus is a thing. Yeah. Look, if the fascists don't like Krampus, I like Krampus. Yeah. He is, he's based, he's sick. Also, yeah. like, these, people, these eight injured people, what did, we don't know what they were like, we don't know what they did, like, maybe they yeah. had a comment. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, if they're, if they're punishing the, the naughties, then, you know, that's all right. That's, it's tradition. How dare they yeah. take away our tradition? That's true. It could be the non-Krampuses with the broken bones. Like, maybe they just took revenge by, like, throwing a milkshake at Krampus, and then Krampus went over and just snapped their forearm. <laughs> could be that. That was very naughty. We'll have to look into it. Based, we'll circle back next week. Based Krampus. Yeah. All right, Father Christmas. We're getting into some more recognizable territory. So Father Christmas was originally, like, more of a pagan guy, not, like, totally distinct from St. Nicholas. Uh, mm. And we get a few versions of it, like Sir Christmas, Captain Christmas, oh. Prince Christmas, stealing my idea, or the <laughs> Christmas Lord. Oh, nice. Uh, there's another fun one I found in here, just looking through all these different international <laughs> Christmas. Yeah, variations Christmas of, the from Highlander. of these <laughs> various figures. And uh, this one is in, uh, it's in like, it, the Christmas man is a thing that it appears in like, Denmark, parts of Germany, Belgium, and of course the Netherlands. Um, but we really want to rip on the Dutch again, where he's named Cursed Man, and I think that speaks for itself. Yeah. Christmas Man. It sounds like a cryptid. It's just like, look, children, the Christmas Man. Get a photo. Oh no, it's <laughs> Yeah. It's like aliens coming to enjoy like christmas <laughs> christmas man feels like a knockoff character you get when you like you want to do yes. like a commercial type thing yeah, but you're yeah. like we can't get the rights to santa so we'll just we, we'll have christmas man yeah yeah like you go to like the dollar oh, store man. and it's like right next to like the yeah. non-denominational like <laughs> yeah we have santa claus at home like, <laughs> the santa claus man. <laughs> no, the little like kiosk dirty. in the shopping center <laughs> Yeah. And then, of course, you have whatever the fuck is going on in Wales with Chimney John. <laughs> nah. Classic. That's like, oh, man, can we have Christmas man? No, we have Christmas man at home. <laughs> and the Christmas man at home is Chimney John. <laughs> Which is Hello, children. Sh Sean oh, Corn. Like, can I do a Welsh accent? Like, hello, children, I am Chimney John. But can you, like, can you do it like with, because uh, it's not, can you do the translation of it? Like the 67? How would you say that? I'm reading it Sean Corn. I don't think that's right. Yeah, Welsh, Welsh is weird. never pronounced like you think. Sean's probably Sing right, but. <laughs> Sean Corn. No, no, I know, like, the way Welsh or the Welsh language is spelt is like C Y M R R U or something like that. It's just like, I don't know. Just, I don't know. It's, it's Lovecraftian language. No, it's, no, Welsh. Yeah. it's not real. Wales is a lovely place. Don't come at me, <laughs> Welsh fans. <laughs> I, I didn't have anywhere else to fit this in, but I I just liked this uh, this El Vieto Pascuero, the Easter old man, uh, referring to him appearing at Christmas time, which in Chile is called Nativity's Easter, uh, which is uh, uh, yeah hmm. confusing. So we got Easter old man, old Easter, and the new Easter, uh, and then we have one here uh, called King of Christmas, 
And I just really nice. like this phrase, a traditional battle between the flesh and the spirit. Oh. Like, it sounds like they were doing, you know, like when people have like military reenactments. But it's they're like, maybe like, okay, half of us are going to dress up as flesh. Half of us are going to dress up as spirit. <laughs> like it's shirts and skins kind of thing. Oh, yeah. The fun the party that we always have. As... I was going to say what? the children will dress up as like the thing from John Carpenter's The Thing and a bunch of them are dressed up as ghosts. That's so cute. I love when they do that in school plays. Also, traditional, traditional battle between the flesh and the spirit is just me at Christmas lunch. Like I want to eat everything, but like I can't. I'm going to die. Or it's like the urge to resist masturbating on Christmas Day. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I can't. It's Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, but again, this, this is relatable holiday <laughs> shit. Like, this yeah, is yeah, right? this is stuff people can get into, not this, you know, Santa Claus garbage. Yeah. Your whole so, family is over. You have one five-minute shower. Can you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Okay, yeah, see you, Grandma. God, this is going to be a tough one. That's like that's like one of our friends' traditions, actually. They told you about that, right? What? I won't so, use their... Does. Okay, well, I won't use their... The actual... Christmas jerk-off? No, yeah, I will well, use their... use their name and we'll probably bleep it. <laughs> Will they? I don't know if it matters or not. Can, oh, can do it. I won't use in their the name. I call him Dine Jerkin off man and No, he just like <laughs> he started as like a tradition, like kind of by accident. Like uh and then Yeah, and then he just realized like oh, I've got to do this every Christmas now, so it's almost like an OCD type thing. So when it when it's time, he has to have like the sad Christmas jerk off no matter what. Every Christmas, every Christmas Eve. Wow, this, is, this is a real thing. This it, is no, it's a traditional a real thing. battle between the flesh and the spirit. It truly is. So wow. this does happen. I didn't know this happened to so many people. people. You can Did you know this is such a problem? In the next room, he's trying to hone in on like the horny scenario. He's just using his imagination. Oh yeah, he said he doesn't even enjoy uh, it most of the time. It's yeah. just like he has to get it done because it's a tradition. <laughs> <laughs> it's like shaping his mashed potatoes into boobs. <laughs> Just a quick one. <gasps> wow. I'm glad you guys are enjoying this because oh, I had no we... idea how well this incredibly dense PowerPoint was going to go over. <laughs> it, I want to talk about the last sentence in this bit here. Yeah, so the <laughs> this is why I got really excited because oh. when you get into this part of English history, you get this kind of like middle English, which you can still read, but it looks like they're just really dumb and don't know how so to funny. spell. <laughs> do you, do you want to do you want to read that uh, that bit? What the King of Christmas did? Sure. Uh, where do we go? Traditional battle between the flesh and spirit. John Gladman, crowned in disguise as King of Christmas, rode behind a pageant of the months, disguised as the season required, <laughs> on a horse decorated with tinfoil. <laughs> Perfect. See, I'm really glad you stepped up that because I was like, I, like, there's got to be a funny voice that we can read. This weird I English. Just, <laughs> yeah, that was what to do. I think you just have to read it like how it how it looks, you know. Yeah. That's how I... All right. You really captured the zeitgeist. Guys, the session required. Liquid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Make Christmas queered again. Decorating horse of a temple. All right. What's next? Is the system. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so now we get to the government of all-time loser and dipshit Oliver Cromwell. Oh, no. Boo. These people are the fucking Puritans. They're the worst. Puritan-controlled English mm -hmm. government had legislated to abolish Christmas, considering it papist, and That's had outlawed papist. its traditional customs. What is papist? It's papist! It means, it means you're, there's some popery going on. It's, oh, oh. Yeah, nefarious popery. No. Oh, wow, crazy. This is my this favorite is paper. My favorite fucking shit about old timey Protestants is how they're everything is like, ah, oh, that's popery. Ah, oh, get out of here, papist. Like they're just like so freaked out by the Pope. Cause as we know, he's an antichrist and a spiritual aggressor. Yeah, that's right. Oh, it's so funny how every other set this is why we went over the schisms, because every other one of those like sects hates the Pope in their own way. Hmm. You're right. This love, is definitely all harmony. required to understand <laughs> these these different variations of That's Santa right. Claus. Also, I love how many times we've had to say schism because like schism sounds vaguely rude. Like, it, I don't, it, just, if I the damn schisms are moving into our neighborhood, you should just you should bleep out the <laughs> word schism throughout the entire episode. We could do that. I, yeah, I gotta try and get one schism in before my family comes over for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, just a quick little schism. <laughs> Just like, like how many how many schisms can you fit in a day, really? <laughs> so there's a. Uh, I usually shoot my schism into a sock. I'm, all right, I'm gonna have to get into my notes here. I really want to read this quote. So, 
uh, there, there was this. I already like it. We yeah. So it at the time of all this, um, at at the time where everyone in England was like arguing over whether you should celebrate Christmas or not, people would write these like satirical or like political like plays and like put them on and they were like pro Christmas and anti Christmas plays. Nice. So this one is from uh around that uh yeah, I think this is like seventeenth century and uh I- I'm gonna do this particular voice because so I, I- saw this uh this linguistics thing once where they went into like they they tried to read shakespeare as it originally would have been written or as it originally would have been read and Uh the accent from that era sounded like surprisingly irish so i'm going to do the lucky charms accent here all right so they describe you know like the they they describe the this this christmas character as being like dressed very unfashionably which is exactly like you know in like the thanksgiving things of like the pilgrims and their buckle hats he's dressed like that oh, yeah. that's what the, the puritans right so mm. that's how he's dressed and surrounded by guards christmas asserts his rightful place in the protestant church and protests against ex- attempts to exclude him Oi, hey, gentlemen do you know what you do ha would you have kept me out? Christmas, old Christmas, Christmas of London, and Captain Christmas. They would not let me in. I must come another time. A good jest. As if I could come more than once a year. Why, I am no dangerous person. And so I told my friends, other guard, I am old Gregory Christmas still. And though I come out of Pope's Head Alley, as good a Protestant as any in my parish. But he can only come once a year, so he's not dangerous. That's right. I just but, and it's on Christmas. Yeah, so how did, the battle of the, the flesh. Yeah. How did we lose Gregory Christmas? Yeah, where was <laughs> I? Don't remember him. That's like parents naming how cats. Has, how has some like shit tier Hollywood studio not made like a Gregory Christmas? And it's like a guy who is like actually there was a movie that's like it's Santa's brother and he's just a normal guy and he's played by like one of the dudes from How I Met Your Mother or some shit. Like nice. <laughs> God, there's so many iterations of Christmas that I didn't know about. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's the only place I found anywhere that said Gregory Christmas, but I, I, I'm in love with that character. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fucking hilarious if that's where we got the name Gregory? <laughs> just like the name, the meaning is just lost now. Just like this one fucking random play where it's just like, oh, by the way, I'm Greg. <laughs> That's why it's such a salacious thing to say. It was yeah. just gibberish. It was a, it was a non-name. Yeah. yeah. Well, like That's it was like it. an immaculate conception of a name. You know, it just like came from. It was like God's only begotten first name. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Americans can't say Greg. They say Craig, Craig, or whatever the fuck they say. Oh yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. We I hate say that name. it. Craigery. <laughs> Craigery. Craig. It's just like just say Greg. <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? You're I'm just sorry. saying the same thing twice. Quig. Craig. Okay, <laughs> so I've got a little screen sharing thing blocking the bottom. So does somebody want to read that one for me? So this is in the, I think in the same play or one of the plays, uh, Christmas has like 10 children. So kind of like uh, Santa's reindeer. So these are their names. Uh, somebody who has their glasses on can oh, read it. There's a, there's a thing. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, you have the same screen as me. Do you want me to do an oldie English accent as I sort of, I've heard, I think, Save that, because this is just sort of Wikipedia voice. (laughs) Alright, alright. The sons and daughters of Christmas are Carol, Misrule, Gamble, Offering, Wassel, Mumming, New Year's Gift, I'm just gonna stop, Post post and Pear. Are those two people, or just an even mince pie and baby cake? Now, (laughs) name your kid baby cake. You could name the cat baby cake or minced pie. What one do you want to be? Probably a minced pie. He's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those names went in a in a way. They went in a direction. They went in a direction. I don't know what direction. But it almost was. it was like it was no direction. It, I'd be really bummed out if my sister when name was named Carol. My name was minced pie. <laughs> <laughs> Carol is sort of a nice name, very dated. But mm, sorry, not to drag it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can keep going. I'm just clicking. So we've got we get some wonderful like I was describing the the plays and shit. So they have titles like this: the arraignment, conviction, and imprisoning of Christmas. Hmm. Uh, okay, so who wants to read this quote? 
uh, in a funny old timey voice. For age, this hoary headed man would of great years, years, and as white as snow, he entered the roomish calendar <laughs> time out of mind. He is old. He was full and fat as any dumb doctor of them all. He looked under the consecrated green sleeves <laughs> as big as boo beef. But since the Catholic leaker is <laughs> taken from him, he w is much wasted, so that he hath looked very thin of and ill of late. But yet, some other marks that you may know him by is that of wanton woman dote after him. He helped them to so many new gonis hatties and hink hinky chiefs and other fine necks of which he hath pack on his back in which is good store of all sorts besides the fine necks that he got out of their husband's pockets for the household provisions for him wonderful why don't you just wear your, your glasses so I, I don't have any <laughs> oh boy alright well you've lost your reading privileges I'm sorry. <laughs> the examination and trial of old father Christmas oh so in this one uh, I don't know do you want to read this one me sure I would love to <clears throat> father Christmas's counsel mounts the defense methinks my lord the oh hi Methinks, my lord, the very clouds blush to see this old gentleman thus egregiously abused, if at any time any have abused themselves by immoderate eating and drinking, or otherwise spoil the creatures, it is none of this old man's fault. Neither. Oh, I just want to interject here, for everyone's context as she finishes this, he is on trial for, like, like the death penalty. Oh, shit. For oh. being Christmas. Go on. Okay, uh, let's see here. <laughs> it's none of this old man's fault, neither ought he to suffer for it. For example, the sun and the moon are by the heathens worshipped, as they therefore bad, because idolized, question mark. So if any abuse this old man, they are bad for abusing him. Not he bad for being abused. Man, I wish I had that lawyer, because he makes The a jury good point. acquits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> He used confuse on the jury, and they were just like, what the fuck did he say? And Father Christmas was able to just kind of, like, sneak out. I think the guy's basically saying, like, you can't be mad at heroin because people love it. Same with Santa. Same <laughs> yeah, with Christmas. Same heroin. with Gregory Christmas. You can't hate Gregory Christmas. You can't. <laughs> All right. So this is, this picture here is, uh, it's technically, this is an illustration from A Christmas Carol. That's Ebenezer Scrooge there, and this is the ghost of, I think, Christmas Present. Um, but according to Wikipedia, which is never wrong, it's like based on the Father Christmas thing. Mm -hmm. And to that, we can only say Father Christmas. Hello. <laughs> he's looking, he's looking great. He's looking yeah. fine. Yeah. Like this is, this from... I would say the oh, hottest, sorry, no. like proto Santa we've seen. The hottest of Scrooge's ghosts for sure. Mm hmm. The most bangable one for sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Wait, you don't think the Grim Reaper is fuckable. I didn't say you wasn't fuckable. I just said, like, in a tier system. I like, think. he's fuckable, but you're not as proud of it. This is the one you show off to your friends. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so and then he embarrasses like, you by putting his foot on the fucking food. My, my version oh. of the Ghost of Christmas present comes from uh, the Scrooge McDuck Christmas Carol and yes. Bill Murray's Scrooged. Could, so could we do he's this? Either like... Oh, I'm sorry? Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> No, no, so he's either, like, the Disney villain Pete, or he's, like, a scary, like, Grim Reaper with, like, ghouls in his ribcage, who become nice at the end. C could we, like, get a picture of the three, of, like, the Scrooge version of, like, the the three ghosts, and then do, like, a fuck, Mary kill? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's put a pin in that for after. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Can this is do more work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I had to go and copy paste all these into here. To go and look up more is another application to open. Let's hey, just see if we can get it. through this slideshow before Lucas has to go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kelly. Oh, right. No, this is perfect. This is like, honestly, I was like, oh, are we have to shorten the game? It's like, no, we're just doing this. <laughs> <laughs>
As interest in Christmas customs waned, Father Christmas's profile declined. He still continued to be regarded as Christmas's presiding spirit, although his occasional earlier associations with the Lord of Misrule died out with the disappearance of the Lord of Misrule himself. Now, obviously, everybody knows who the Lord of Misrule is. Wasn't that one of the, the helpers? <laughs> Misrule? I actually, I think I did spoil it for you guys uh, when I was at your place earlier. But like, Lucas, what do you think the Lord of Misrule is? Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I just sent through a picture of uh, the Scrooge McDuck version of the Ghost of Christmas Present. I think we have a contender for like problematic wood. Uh, <laughs> All right, we'll circle back to that. <laughs> Krampus? What, was it one of the other Christmas cryptids, or...? No, this is vastly better, and again, look at what they took from you. All right, here's a nice little Lord of Misrule party. In England, the Lord of Misrule, known in Scotland as the Abbot of Unreason, and in <laughs> France as Prince des Sceaux, which means, like, Prince of Idiots, was an officer appointed by lot during mm -hmm. Christmas Tide to preside over the Feast of Fools. The Lord of Misrule was generally a peasant or subdeacon appointed to be in charge of Christmas revelries, which often included drunkenness and wild partying. That sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, is there a catch? Is there well, a catch? <laughs> maybe. When I dug into, like, what is Christmas tied? It was like, oh, yeah, when you have the calendar, like, it's just like it's built into all these, like, different, like, Christian fortnights and stuff. But, like, Christmas was 12 days. That's where the song comes from. Like, you're supposed to be partying your ass off for 12 days. Again, mm -hmm. remember what they took from you. Mm -hmm. be mad and also because it was like winter like it was probably important to party during those days because it was like the shittiest time of year like it was cold as hell and this is like probably when most people would have died yeah 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 i i'm glad you've adjusted this concept of christmas being the cold part of the year these fucking people and their hot christmas <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucked up <laughs> chaos God. christmas i love it yeah you should be doing your Christmas in June. It's the winter solstice. Anyway, I'm going to get off this. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the Lords began their rule on All Holland U, Halloween, of course, and Wait. continued till the same morrow after the Feast of Purification, commonly called Candlemas. And I will save everyone looking up what I already looked up. That is like the beginning of February. So it's just like three months you get to be the Lord of Mr. Whoa, apparently. awesome. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's rad. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah. Some historians believe a possible start of the feast came between 1119 and 1124 from Herod games that were led by Geronimo of Rikersburg. These games focused around the alleged absurdity of King Herod, a Jewish Roman ruler of Judea, and was practiced by storming a cathedral, throwing wooden spears at the choir, and beating bystanders with inflated animal bladders. Oh, yeah. Wow. So Why are we doing this? Why are we doing? Why have we lost so much? You know, how, when you're measuring progress of society in the world at large, like, I don't know, if you're losing these kind of things, you're, I don't know. Like, look, you know, with the wooden spears thing could be like nerfed a little bit. They could be like nerfed nerf spears, spears or something like that. But like, I don't know, bashing people with like inflatable things. This all sounds like a lot of fun. This, yeah. Yeah. This sounds like a, a 90s toy commercial at this point. We got nerfs, got back, change, changing my name to Herod Games. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wow. Love it. So this is another one we will not get into the context because it's way less funny. <laughs> Due to all of them taking place in the post-Christmas season, this festival, the Feast of the Ass, <laughs> oh, nice. and the Feast of the Circumcision all grew more entangled over the centuries. Of course. <laughs> As a result of fusing with the Feast of the Ass, when the church forbade festivities from taking place within churches, instead of uh, dressing up as high-ranking members of the church, they instead wore hats to resemble donkey ears. I don't think we need to talk about this. This is pretty cut and dry. The Zoomers are bringing back the Feast of the Ass, but <laughs> I'm not sure what kind of feast we have for a circumcision. I'm not sure I want to know. Huh. Huh. Uh, they have a bris or something like that. Sorry. No. no. Moving along. We're going to dip quickly to Saturnalia. Um... Saturnalia is not necessarily like it's very disputed that it is like the origin of the Feast of Fools and Lord of Misrule stuff. Um, but the the vibes are similar and it will segue into our pagan stuff in a minute. And there's just some great shit here. So let's get into wow, it. We haven't even talked about the pagan. Oh, no. The oh. pagans are the best part. Wow. This is a quote from someone who's mad about Saturnalia. OK. Um, who wants to be a very. Just a very stodgy. Roman or Greek guy. 
Oh, oh I don't feel like memes. getting canceled. Sorry. <laughs> well, just do your just do your South African accent. <laughs> <laughs> or make him sound this British. Mis this is misnamed a feast, being full of annoyance. Since going out of out of doors is burdensome, and staying within doors is not undisturbed. For the common vagrants and the jugglers of the stage, dividing themselves into squads and hordes, hang about every house. The gates of public officials, they besiege with special persistence. Sorry, I can't do it anymore. Actually shouting and clapping their hands until he that is beleaguered within, exhausted, throws out to them whatever money he has and even what is not his own. Oh, cool. It sounds sick. And those mendicants going from door to door follow one after another and until late in the evening, there is no relief from this nuisance for crowd succeeds crowd. So it's Halloween. It's Christmas Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for the South African accent. I love that we're all abandoning our, our accents during this. So that's like, it's consistent. You abandoned the, the quote entirely. <laughs> <laughs> we just <sighs> left it. So the guy, for those, uh, you know, possibly just listening, um, the guy says, for crowd succeeds crowd and shout, shout and loss, loss. Um, so I love this sorry, idea of just going up to rich people's houses and just like making noise until they throw money out the window. At <laughs> yes, us. that's amazing. <laughs> this would fix a lot of my problems. <laughs> mm -hmm. it actually would play to your strengths <laughs> honest farmers coming into the city were likely to be jeered at and spanked and or robbed Ooh. oh, oh I no i'm just a lost farmer <laughs> oh what, don't spank what me what am i doing here <laughs> step villager no <laughs> those aren't cows oops <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna jeer at me and call me a little worm <laughs> Oh no, hey. don't step on me. I'm just and, a country boy. And no. being robbed was that was the story. He, he's like, no, I, I didn't pay him. He robbed me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't pay him to spank me. <laughs> I, and, and make fun of me. No, he robbed me. Exactly. <laughs> All right. I don't even remember what happens next. Oh yeah, I'm, I'll do this one. For they ridicule and insult the August government. They mount a chariot as though upon a stage. They appoint pretend lictors and publicly act like buffoons. This is the nobler part of the ribaldry. But their other doings, how can one mention them? Does not the champion, the lion-hearted man, the man who, when armed, is the admiration of his friends and the terror of his foes, lose his tunic to his ankles, twine a girdle around his breast, use a woman's sandal, oh, no. put no, a no. roll of hair on his head in feminine fashion, and ply the distaff full of wool, and with that right hand which once bore the trophy, draw out the thread, and changing the tone of his voice, utter his words in the sharp of feminine treble. So oh. drag queens. Alright, so are we circling back to that very first picture with, uh, what was the name? The Twink? This is still yeah, the Jimmy the Twink. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> I think this dude is definitely still... I think this is a... It might be the same quote from before, but he's just mad about Saturnalia. But that could be related. I think this... This guy doth protest too much. I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I, I just, hate it when a man dresses up in drag and God. and steps on me. And when his <laughs> hair is trash. Yeah, his this hair is, is really, really nice. I'm gonna describe it in great detail, actually. Sixteen hundred so years ago, this guy is like, Oh, they're read the uh, dressing in women's clothing and reading to children at the library. Can you imagine? Like, <laughs> fuck off. Oh god, yeah, this is drag queen. This, it's, this guy. it's Christmas Halloween drag queens. It's this sounds rad. This is what yeah. they took from us. Well, here's where it gets radder. Oh man. However, according to anthropologist Sum Yahoo, there was a darker side to the Saturnalia festival. In Durastorum on the Danube, Roman soldiers would choose a man from among them to be the Lord of Misrule for 30 days. At the end of that 30 days, his throat was cut on the altar of Saturn. Oh shit. Yeah. Uh. Similar origins of the British Lord of Misrule as a sacrificial king who was later put to death for the benefit of all, have also been recorded. So that so may or may not have happened in England. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, well, I feel like I've heard that before. It's like you get to party like a king for like 30 days. And yeah. Then, yeah. I mean, I told you about it like a week ago at a party. So <laughs> no. Maybe why. no, no, I mean, yeah, obviously from there as well. Yes. 
you know, a dark, a fun dark way to end the podcast would be like, and Lucas, you are the, it's the 30th day and you are the king of the fools. And I'll be like, oh no. <laughs> you know, that word I will be bleeping out. Uh, all right. Pagan shit. We're into the pagan shit. God, God Jewel. Jewel. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. He's vaping with this Oh, I love game. that album. Yeah. <laughs> Jules pagan phase so we're gonna we're gonna skip some of the less fucked up uh uh pagan shit the group of christmas characters would often include the yule goat a yes. rowdy and sometimes scary creature demanding gifts <laughs> that is so scary. A regular goat yeah yeah, yeah. Just, that's just... fun why are we always giving the kids gifts just loose a goat on them until like, they give up their like, what do goats like to eat like do they eat like little cookies children. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you should just like tie a cookie shit. to children and then like put them in a goat pen yeah. and have to send the goat after them and be like remember if the goat goes for you first you're on santa's naughty list and we're and the we're Christmas. why are we so confused that like people died so much younger <laughs> it's just like you know just tying tie well we'll just tie them to goats and <laughs> yeah look yeah. at the horns on this thing yeah he's got some some nice ones I feel like the pagan Christmas writers were just running out of ideas at this point. It's just like, oh, uh, the Christmas goat. Yeah, he, he likes taking shit from you. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Uh, anyway, this Christmas was mad about it. There's something about uh, this happened in England. Riding of Yule and his wife, which involved a figure representing Yule who carried bread and a leg of lamb. Uh, in some year, the riding... I'm not... <laughs> this doesn't save us any time. In 1572, the writing was suppressed on the orders of the archbishop, who complained of the indecent and uncomely disguising, which drew multiple, um, which drew multitudes of people from divine service. Can't be having that. So, no. so it's a guy and his wife with with a nice lunch. I can't. And this is obscene somehow. What obscene. were they doing with it? <sighs> this, so this yeah, one. Fuck yes. This one I'm going to cover in passing, just because I couldn't find anything good on it. But apparently, in Sweden, they have the Christmas gnome. Oh. The Yultomten. Hey. Yeah, and uh, there's not much there, but like now they're basically like very close to what you would con consider elves now. Uh, um, but the most salacious thing I could find was that like this is like just more generic historic uh, gnome folklore. According to tradition, the gnomes live in the houses and barns of the farmstead and se secretly acts as their guardian. If treated well, they protect the family and animals from evil and misfortune and may also aid the chores and do farm work. However, they are known to be short-tempered, especially when offended. Once insulted, they will usually play tricks, steal items, and even maim or kill livestock. Mm. I feel like we could work this in. You know, like when you go to go to the mall, your picture with Santa, like if your kid is like crying or like, you know, like if the elves get pissed off, they should just be able to like Cause steal, havoc. like just take your watch. Yeah, just start stealing, or just follow you home push, and like move your, your cat around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is is this what they're trying to do with Elf on the Shelf? And but I will not go on an, another Elf on the Shelf rant. So that's right, myself. not another Sorry. one. <laughs> yeah, you've got a hard out. So this is uh, Olencero, and. This is a fun one because... Uh, Dress up like a cum. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that's... Uh, I was going to say a Teletubby, but... I didn't get her name. She's a companion to him, and I I, I fucked oh. up, and I didn't write down what this, her deal is. This is all about coming on Christmas. No, this character on the left is Olenceto. Oh. Oh. So, <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Like a, he just looks bad. like a dude. It's, yeah. Well, the fun thing... like a dude I went to film school with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The fun thing about uh, Europe is, like, the parts that were maybe if anything a little less christianized and a little more pagan um are often places that like didn't quite you know absorb to the culture so this is from basque country in spain which you know has its own like language which is very not latin and all that so let's learn about olencero one common version has olencero being one of the yentiac a race of basque giants living in the pyrenees Legend has it that they observed a glowing cloud in the sky one day. None of them could look at this bright cloud except for a very old, nearly blind man. When asked to examine it, he confirmed their fears and being told, sorry, he confirmed their fears and told them that it was a sign that Jesus would be born soon. According to some stories, the old man asked the giants to throw him off a cliff to avoid having to live through Christianization. <laughs> having obliged him, the giants tripped on the way down and died th themselves. <laughs> Except Olencero. <laughs> <sighs> that's that's funny. Yeah, this is this character rules. 
So there, there's like even like Basque Country is a small place, but there's uh like even within different towns, it's offering different traditions. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna try to pronounce all these towns. I only looked up the pronunciation for for Onanzaro and for the other word. Uh, in the one town, he was called Onanzaro and said to have three eyes and usually depicted as a drunkard dressed like a scarecrow. People would ask Onanzaro of the red eyes, "Where did you catch that fish?" Meaning, where did you get drunk? <laughs> And the answer would be last night at 11 in the rocks of Zuriola. So like, oh, that's fun. You can go up to this little Santa and be like, hey, Santa, how'd you get so drunk? And he's like, well, just, it's just there's just a lot of party over there. <laughs> All right, let's check in with some other towns. So many Christmas and pagan myths. As I understand like in some of these countries, like they had hallucinogenic mushrooms and they had like ergot poisoning and stuff like that. So it just feels like something... Uh, drugged up guy would come up with like something a stoned person would write down stone and look at later and be like oh this is goofy look at this <laughs> it's so good yeah oh it gets better all right another town oh sorry that was the first one next town children would be told to come home early an adult would then dress up as olencero and scare the children steal on the streets with a stickle <laughs> of course oh yeah <laughs> yeah rowdy Wow. Imagine being that frightening to your children. (laughs) Next place. If the children did not want to go to bed, a sickle would be thrown down the chimney and the children told that Olensero would come to cut their throats if they did not go to bed. (laughs) Oh, wow. That's like such a commitment, though, too, as like the parent, like having to get up on the roof and throw the sickle down just just for this particular prank. Well, if you've got multiple kids, you got to know you're not bluffing. If one kid doesn't go to bed, you have to cut the kid's throat so that the other kids know (laughs) that you mean business. (laughs) That that was, yeah, that, there was actually no, like, you know, stillbirth or anything like that. That was just why you just had to keep cutting kids' throats to, like, keep the magic of Yule alive. Yes. Yeah. In Dima, a straw puppet dressed as Olencero with a stickle would be hung from the church tower after the midnight mass on Christmas Eve. And if children had been behaving badly, people would say, Olencero with the red eyes has come to the chimney. If we break the fast, he will cut our throats. Referring to the <laughs> traditional fast in the week before Christmas. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this is intense. So many good songs, though, we don't sing anymore. Santa is such a fucking pussy. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, compared to this dude? Yeah. Yeah, this guy's a savage. Yeah, just dresses like a working man. He's no bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's just <laughs> dishing out, like, you know, blue-collar knowledge. Yeah. Getting the getting the kids to go to sleep anyway yeah you get to sing slurs yeah so you get to sing you get to sing a fun song oh big belly pig is is the red eyes because he's so hammered that he has like fucked bloodshot eyes or something like that it could be (laughs) that's that's funny that's what i'm getting the sense of all right now we're on to diet maroz oh he's cool looking this guy looks like a D &D giant Yeah, yeah so it's like a slavic wizard of winter Cool. And he gets a lot of different versions in different, like, Eastern European or even just, like, generally, like, formerly Soviet countries. They're, a lot of them are kind of the same. Grandpa Frost, Grandfather Frost, Winter Old Man, Grandfather Winter, and, of course, Master of Cold, Ooh, nice. <laughs> which is the Yakut people's name for him and by far the best. Is, is this what the Sofian Stevens song, Lonely Man of Winter, was about? He was actually singing about a cool frost-like wizard. He was very lonely for about a decade because following the Russian Revolution, Christmas traditions were actively discouraged because they were bourgeois and religious, which is just the 1917 version of popery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 1928, Died Moroz was declared an ally of the priest and a kulak. Fuck him. So now we have some Soviet anti Died Moroz propaganda. Yes. Oh, nice. Uh... And I, I believe the caption translates to "get out of our way." It's got a—he's wielding a, an entire tree. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's already looking more santified here. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's got boots in his sack. Yeah. yeah. And so and he's taking the Kremlin away. <laughs> it looks like a giant. Oh yeah, maybe. So, it's a shockingly political figure. So in Romania in 1948, the communists took power, no more Christmas. And so they replaced their father Christmas with an old man Frosty, which is similar to Died Moroz because the, the Soviets did t- change their mind and like went ham on appropriating him as their dude. Because he's cool. He's cool as shit, particularly that first piece yeah, of art. Yeah. Like- yeah. And so after communism fell, uh, he went away and uh, Father Christmas came back. So 
entirely political figure here. Wow. So we can learn about his friends. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so the, yeah, the Edinburgh's got, like, imported to all these places. So in Slovenia, they, like, a lot of places would just do their own, like, languages version of, like, Grandfather Frost or whatever. Um, but options here included the snowman and Daddy Triglav. Ooh. Ooh. Female figure named Grandma Winter was also proposed. So uh, one of very few, again, female figures that we get here. Uh, so the, yeah, the reason for like Triglov is it's like a mountain in Slovenia, I guess. Um, but again, that context is way less funny. Uh, oh yeah. And, uh, here is me hanging out with, uh, Died Moros. Nice. nice. And, oh, uh, yeah. So the, the, the fun thing in like Russia on New Year's is that they have like a shit ton of these around. Like, you just go to the town square, and there's, like, 15 Dead Mode Roses and all these different colors, and they just, like, hand out candy to kids, which oh. is pretty sweet. Nice. Nice. And according to some more recent lore, uh, so here is, uh, this is Dead Mode Roses, uh, companion, uh, Snigorochka, which means, uh, usually, like, snow maiden or snow girl, and, uh, like, I think canonically usually his granddaughter. And according to some more recent traditions, they fight the Baba Yaga, who is trying to take away the kids' presents. Nice. Oh, fuck yeah. That's good. It's that's so nice good that it's not... It's so nice that this isn't like a... He gives them candy, but if they're bad, he cuts off their feet. Or yeah, <laughs> that's what the like, Baba no, Yaga no, he... wants to do. They're on your side here, clearly. Which is nice. But Baba Yaga... Wasn't Baba Yaga sometimes good in her stories, though? She was just like a chaos creature? That couldn't could tell you. I couldn't. I could not handle another Wikipedia article. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and in uh, the one language, uh, she's called uh, Barfak, <laughs> which means that's, snowball. That's a terrible name. Yeah, I think that's in Tajik. It's, it's the noise I make on Christmas night. <laughs> yeah, Barfak. So, what's happened to him post-Soviet Union? Very popular in modern Russia. In 1998, the town of Veliki Ustyug in Vologda Oblast, Russia, was declared the home of Russian Dead Moroz by the mayor of Moscow. Previously, he had just, like, lived in Siberia as kind of their, like, North Pole situation. Um, I only put this up because this is the town flag of Veliki Ustyug. <laughs> nice. Which, once wow. again, problematic wood. <laughs> what is that? A, why is... Never mind. Just... So this is his house. Oh. It's like the, oh, uh, yeah. Kind of... Yeah. So instead of being more like abstract, like he lives far, like, oh yeah, he lives, you know, far away. It's like, it's, no, he lives over there. Yeah, he lives <laughs> in this giant fucking mansion. So I think he's just now a Russian oligarch. Like he's got, he got in pretty good. Nice. Yeah. So uh, in 2008, uh, Putin visited this residence as a part of the Christmas Eve celebration. And that's why he's kind of bored looking getting the tour. So does a guy live there all year yeah, round? Yeah, he he's Maros. a real guy. Like he's just. Yeah, I know, but the, like he's right there. What do you, get, well, why I, do you have I, all I, these questions? I, he's real. I, I know he's real, man. He's, he's he's physically real. But like, does he get paid? Couldn't tell you. Yeah, it's like being a white housekeeper. You have to be the dead morals, but you have to be method all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just really like this idea that they have a Wikipedia section called International Relations of Died Moroz, as if he's, like, a <laughs> diplomat, <laughs> which is exactly what it implies. Um, so these characters are presented in the media as being in an ongoing detente with various counterparts from other cultures, such as Estonia Santa Claus and the Finnish Santa Claus, or the Yule Goat, and other figures. So, like, I, I really want more, like, pictures of video of this, but it's all just, like, the Santas, I guess, hanging out. It's like a G8 of Santas. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're like, yeah, we got to no, work out some treaties. It's like when Superman died and they introduced all those other Supermen and they had a fight. Yeah. Sure. 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 No, sure. Okay, never mind, never mind. <laughs> no, weird. 90s Superman was weird. Uh, one of them was a cyborg. One of them was a cyborg. Yeah. Anyway, a uh, cyborg Santa, that would be cool. So what else has oh, uh, Died Moroz got off to in the, uh, in the post-Soviet world? In 2012, a young man dressed as Died Moroz was stabbed to death in Dushanbe by a crowd yelling, you infidel. The murder was mo motivated by religious hatred, according to Tajik oh, police. No way. Cool. Yeah. No. What? That's, that's one canonically murdered Santa. <laughs> but I thought you said they liked him. I thought he was... Well, this was in Tajikistan, which is like... Oh. 
the the relationship i guess with uh russia and the admirals and christmas is different in a lot of the like their former so uh muslim republic so <laughs> didn't go well for this particular dude yeah <laughs> all right so quick dip back to the yule goat I did not look up how to pronounce the Finnish word, so let's go with Yulipuki. Um, oh, probably knows. I found this at the last minute. So, this, uh, in the Nutin Paiva, a tradition has been observed, which is somewhat analogous to the modern Santa Claus, where young men dressed as goats, Nutipuki, <laughs> would visit houses. Usually the dress was an inverted fur jacket, a leather birch bark mask, and horns. Unlike Santa Claus, Nutipuki was a scary character like Krampus. The men dressed as Nutipuki wandered from house to house, came in and typically demanded food from the household and especially leftover alcoholic beverages. Unless Nutipuki <laughs> received a salary from the host, he committed evil deeds. <laughs> yes. I could do this. Let's do this. Yes. Let's do this tonight. Again, I really like all the sanctioned ce- stealing. It's just why yeah. don't we do that anymore but not even like hey give me your nice stuff it's like can i have your like half empty bottle <laughs> yeah, like empty <laughs> beer yeah it's not two to me i don't want to beat your kids just she, do you have anything in your cabinet it's been sitting there a while she got some cooking wine like some just like the last eighth of a bottle that you were going to use to make bolognese i'll take that yes <laughs> yeah it's it's funny because like in i know i have to go soon but like in uh in finland uh my wife grew up there uh you know for a little bit and their halloween like they have all the kids dress up as witches and do this so it's weird to hear that their christmas is also like a second halloween that's right i reckon they should do christmas halloween they really like to go to people's places and just like <laughs> just take fuck stuff. up their shit yeah, yeah just fuck up their shit yeah like well, man guess... when, once we go door to door and like steal all your you know like your PBRs with five drops in them out of your recycling, <laughs> you're going to be like, I, I, I actually was okay with just the carolers. That was fine. Yeah. <laughs> I like how like, uh, all these like countries that are like statistically the happiest to have so much like stealing <laughs> bait into their culture, like on yeah, holidays. There's something to be learned there. Yeah. Right. It's I don't know what the lesson Australia- is there. Well, like in Australia, we're massive cops. Like, we really, there was this, like, big pushback against Halloween because it was, like, too American. But, like, I don't know, maybe we would be more chill and laid back if we had, like, not only Halloween, but, like, you know, thief Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, that, wait, this has got to be, like, way, go back across, like, tons of culture. Have you heard of, like, that mummering thing that they do in New Oh, yeah, that was, like, yeah, that was a big part of most of these things. It was just, like, didn't have time to go into it. Yeah, just go but, to people's places and fuck up their shit. Yeah, like, sometimes it's caroling, sometimes it's putting on plays, and sometimes it's, like, demanding shit. Yeah. So, anyway, this picture is... Uh, you remember the... It was supposed to be a reveal. You remember the Yule goat from before? She I turns do. into a lady. Look how they massacred my boy! <sighs> they santified him. Oh. He used to be so yoked. Oh. Yeah. And this is just this is just the the new personified Yule goat and his wife. Um, which is just a segue into Mrs. Claus, which is not at all old. It's from like the nineteenth century, but like we didn't have any female characters. So I was like, is there anything funny mm-hmm. on Mrs. Claus's Wikipedia page? All I got was this. Uh oh, I thought this said miracle at first. An account of a Christmas musical at the State Lunatic Asylum in Utica, New York, in 1854, included an appearance by Mrs. Santa Claus with baby in arms who danced to a holiday song. That's a fact. Hmm. Oh, maybe. The miracle is that Mrs. Claus is still fertile at 100 years old or whatever she is. (laughs) I feel like maybe what it's saying, and this is way less funny, is that they just like put on a little pageant at this asylum and they're like look we had a mrs claus i thought it said miracle where it's like yeah they said that mrs claus just appeared and i was like well this was an asylum amazing like well it's not it's not news <laughs> no she just did a little holiday song and yeah, i fucked up we'll edit ditty. that out this is this is a baffling sentence i read in more recent films such as the santa claus series fred claus and the christmas chronicle series mrs claus is not always depicted according to the elderly white-haired stereotype but sometimes appears to be younger than santa in the case of the christmas chronicles this is true despite the fact that goldie Hawn, known for maintaining her youthful blonde appearance is actually six years older than kurt russell who plays santa 
they they just went to Wikipedia and they just wrote that. Yeah. It's a fun little no. bit of modern trivia. Wiki writers are fucking deranged. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. my experience. It's like, hey, did you know that Goldie Hawn is actually old? She looks hot, but she's old. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? In line with Christmas I, canon. Everyone's got to know um, about this. There, there's absolutely a Jilf wiki. Like, if there's a foot wiki, there's got to be one for, like, you know, older women that people have, like, you know, just weirdly horny for. Oh, yeah. Like, girl, yeah, yeah. All right, girl, we got one more slide and you got to go, so. Oh, cheers. In conclusion, Christmas is a land of contrasts. Um, I, these are just where I threw all the other screenshots I had. Uh, I felt like I had to mention St. Lucie because there was, like, it's just some places they're like, fuck St. Nicholas, we got St. Lucie. And uh, there's just all this stuff about her getting her eyes gouged out, which makes her the patron saint of those with eye illnesses. Which mm-hmm. I don't know if you having your eyes, eyes gouged out is an illness, but <laughs> oh, yeah. she was sick. <laughs> yeah. You stabbed her. <laughs> she died. Gou- died of an illness. Being my stabbed. gouged out eyes are playing up again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so I didn't really talk about modern Santa because we all kind of know about modern Santa. The, the, the basic thing is that all of these things just got amalgamated into him. But I like this one little bit that's it's from the transition when it went from Father Christmas to Santa and like all the like modern things were crystallizing. And there was this period where uh, Father Christmas just had like raffle tickets. <laughs> so he just like hand them out from his bag. It's like, well, some of you get a present. <laughs> Uh, and then I was trying to find this thing about the reindeer, uh, cause we talked about this in a previous episode, but I was looking into weird reindeer lore and like post Rudolph reindeer, uh, including, um, wait, yeah, we'll come back to that. But there's post Rudolph reindeer. And in this one story, this dude's like, no, I've got my own reindeer, including flossy and glossy smash racer and pacer smash reckless and speckless smash fearless and peerless. Smash. smash and ready and steady. Smash. Probably smash. Smash, yeah. yeah. Those are some dog shit names. <laughs> Flossy and glossy sounds like it's from like a Megan the Stallion song. Yeah, like, yeah, totally. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't oh. even find that section anymore, and I gave up. But I just do remember that it did mention that there was the introduction of a reindeer named Chet in the Santa Claus. <laughs> Jet. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to leave you with that horrible image of this extremely fucked up shitty reindeer. Oof. Oh, it's from the Santa Claus movie, right? Yeah. Oof. Nightmare. Don't love him. Nightmare yeah. fuel. This is one we don't Look, need to bring back. We need to return to tradition. We need to beat children with bags of ashes. Threaten them with size. Yeah. We Throw need to just down. steal. We need to raid our neighbors, neighbors' liquor cabinets, but we do not need these new reindeer. Uh, get drunk Agreed. enough to fight Baba Yaga. Yes. Yes. <laughs>